Hello everyone, uh, welcome to week 6. Uh, by now I believe uh, uh, you are comfortable with the concept of structural analysis of uh, uh, statically determinate structure, uh, means how to determine the internal forces and uh, deflections of uh, beams, then plane trusses and uh, plane frames. Now, all the problem that we have uh, we have addressed so far, uh, what you assume the structure is a rest condition, that is why it is we could apply static equilibrium conditions. And in addition to that, we also assumed implicitly uh, that the applied load on the structure that is also at the same position, they do not change their position with time, right. But there are many cases uh, in, in many structure, the, the loads, primary load they are subjected to, those loads are not uh, fixed to the structure, those loads change their position uh, with time, those are called moving loads. Now, what we will be doing in this week is, we will see how to deal with these moving loads. Um, so, the, this week what we do is, the influence line diagram and the moving loads. What is influence line diagram? I am not going to tell you right now. Mm. We will understand as we, uh, as we, as we, as we go through. Okay. Uh, first, let me show you some structures which are subjected to moving loads. So, today, today we will just introduce the concept of influence line diagram and the subsequent lectures we will see different examples and other uh, different uh, aspects of, uh, of the influence line diagram. Okay. You see, these are some, some structure, there are many. Um, these are some structures which are, uh, they are subjected to dead load anyway, uh, dead load is always there, but, in a, but the primary load they are subjected to is the, you see in this case is a bridge, railway bridge, uh, the, when the train moves, um, um, uh, then this, uh, the, then uh, means train changes its position. Uh, then the flyover where the vehicles are, uh, vehicles are, um, vehicles are running and uh, the position of the vehicles continuously changing, same here. Um, it is it is a ropeway and if you see the ropeway is this, this, this is moving uh, and the supporting structure of the ropeway is subjected to a load uh, which is not fixed in its position, which changes um, its position with time. In fact, uh, if we, when we climb a stair, uh, when we climb, climb a ladder, uh, that is also a moving load because if we assume that if we consider the ladder is a structure, then the the our weight is the uh, is, is the load sub load applied on the structure. Then as we move, as um, uh, as we climb, um, the position of this load is also changing. These are typical example. You many of you have uh, seen this. Uh, so when when the person walks through um, uh, walking on the rope uh, when walks on this rope and depending on the pull these are these these are the supporting structure this tripod kind of thing that you can see is a very similar to the tripod uh, the concept wise at least very similar to the tripod that you can see um, in camera um, so the loads uh, subjected to these structures are not uh, constant they are uh, t um, the position of this load is changing now there are many other examples like this so if you look around and see different kinds of structures which are subjected to uh, these moving loads what we will be doing here is we will see how this moving load uh, can be considered uh, while um, uh, in analysis of structure now remember one thing we are still, we will be still doing static analysis uh, when mm, you may see that the, if the load is moving then probably the dynamic effect is important, yes dynamic e effect is important. If we find that inertia of the structure is important to, important to be considered then of course we need to go for dynamic analysis and for that you will be having um, a separate course uh, called structural dynamics. But what we will be doing is the same problem but dealing with uh, dealing with, uh, um, we will we'll still stick to uh, static, uh, the concept of static equilibrium conditions. Okay. Now, uh, let us first describe what exactly the problem we are, uh, we are going to, uh, we are going to address. You see, uh, take any example, uh, this is true for any, any, any problem, but just for demonstration, I am taking an example like this. Um, this is a bridge and uh, 
which is a three span mainly one is this is supported on abutment both sides supported on abutment and the central span which is supported on two piers now look at this this structure carefully uh, there is a you can you can see some gaps between these two girders and these two girder means this girder is not continuous so they are simply supported gara they are just supported on this on this pier this is on abutment and a pier and this is on two pier and this is um, one pier and abutment so each every gara can be idealized as a simply supported beam okay now suppose this there is a vehicle standing um, on a central on the central gara okay now this is a self weight of the vehicle and the self weight of the vehicle will uh, will cause if we assume that length of the vehicle is small as compared to the length of the girder we can assume that this will apply a concentrated load at this point right concentrated load at this point and then we know how to analyze this structure but now if the load is not constant now if the load moves right now consider central girder as the as the as the vehicle changes its position then the internal forces in the central girder or for that matter any girder internal forces uh, they keep on changing right now uh, let's take we'll see how to deal with that but let's take a snapshot uh, for for a given time instant suppose the position of this uh, vehicle is this okay now as i said uh, suppose these are the um, the numbering now as i said uh, this force the if we assume this length is small as compared to the um, length of the girder it can be idealized as a concentrated load we'll see other example where uh, the load is not concentrated it is a distributed load or a train of concentrated load those examples we'll see in subsequent uh, classes now Uh, so load the weight of this structure is now idealized as a concentrated load at that point at a given instant so this is a snapshot now this central girder bc is idealized as so this is a real system the physical system and this is an idealized system idealized um, uh, idealized model of central girder bc as i said uh, these girders are not continuous this is simply supported so these ends are simply supported length is l and it is subjected to a concentrated load right now let us so this is at a snapshot at a, at, a, at a given time instant at a given position of the uh, of the load but now what is happening so for this problem we can find out what are the reactions set supports what are the bending moment shear force at any at any cross section of the beam so this uh, whatever knowledge whatever understanding we have based on that we can determine that right now what is happening this load p is not constant this load this is this is an idealized model of this vehicle now as the vehicle moves this load is not constant so what is happening this vehicle is moving between b and c and this load is also corresponding moving now what we'll do is now as this load moves in the previous in the previous slide what we saw is for a given instant of time for a given particular location of the load we can determine what are the force internal forces and reactions in the beam now at the load at at the load changes its position internal forces and support reactions also change their value what we are interested now is how those values internal internal forces and support reactions how their values change uh, with change in the location of p that is the problem so problem is once again let me tell you um, as this load move in as this load moves on this beam how the internal forces and support reaction change um uh, for this movement of this load now so take the problem let us find out how they move take the problem it is at a given uh, given position of this load suppose this position is uh, okay now you see uh, uh, we know that we are uh, linear uh, linearity is one of the important assumptions in our analysis whatever concepts we learn uh the load deflection is linear and then we also know that uh, 
that the uh, uh, the internal forces are linear function of the external forces right so instead of though in this problem the uh, actual load applying on the structure is p let us uh, it is a standard practice that instead of assume a load p let us assume there is a the, the, the load the value of the load is unit so it, the structure is subjected to an unit load now whatever response we get that response if you multiply it if the actual load is p then response will be responses will be multiplied by p so you get the actual response okay now so it is subjected to an unit load suppose this load is at a distance x from p now this this x is continuously changing for different position of the load we have uh, the position of x uh, with the different values of x okay let us find out for a given value of x for a given position of x what will be the internal forces and support reactions okay now this is a static problem uh, so we have we, we can apply the static equilibrium condition we can draw the free body diagram of the entire structure and find out the reaction uh, this problem we have uh, we have attempted many times uh, in, la in in the previous uh, in last several lectures so we can determine what are the support reactions support reactions are uh, by is this um, and cy is this a bx will be zero here because there is no horizontal force so therefore it is not uh, explicitly written so we know the support reaction this and um, at b and c are this now once we know the support reaction let us find out uh, suppose the bending moment and shear force at point e which is at the mid uh, span of bc okay so this distance is l by 2 this distance is l by 2 let us find out what is the shear force and bending moment at point E. Now uh, we have to take two situ we can see we have to we need to consider two situation one is first when uh, when x is such that the load is applied between B and E this is say case 1. So in this case uh, your x varies from 0 to L by 2 ok. Now, the next case is when the load is acting on on E C. So, the next case is load is acting on E C. So, x is it is x is between L by 2 to L. So, these are two cases ok. Now, we can apply the we can now we can take the free body diagram of say part um, B we can take the free body diagram of part B E. Um, and uh, we can take the part B and draw the free body diagram. So, this is B, this is the unit load acting at a distance x, this distance is L by 2 and the internal forces at E will be shear force. You please check I mean uh, be consistent with the sign convention, this is our sign convention V E and then um, sagging moment is positive, this is M E. Uh, the horizontal there will be horizontal force as well that is not explicitly shown here because anyway horizontal force is at 0. Um, so, this is the free body diagram of uh, B C. Now, from this free body diagram now we can apply the equilibrium condition if you apply equilibrium condition summation of forces is equal to 0 and summation of moments is equal to 0 then what we get is uh, we get V E is equal to the shear force is equal to this and m e is equal to x by 2. This exercise we have done many times. So, um, I, I, I believe you can do this. Now, similarly take the same part uh, from this case and draw the free body diagram of this. This is B e. There is no unit load here. Now, the unit because this load is acting on E c. So, there will be no load here. Uh, same V and m e are the internal forces apply um, equilibrium conditions and if you if you do that then V e will be this and V m e will be this ok. So, what we have done so far it is still a static problem uh, for a given instant of for a given position of the load we determine what is the reactions and what are the shear force and bending moments at any particular location. And for demonstration purpose we considered um, consider the midpoint, but it can be uh, it can be done similar exercise can be done for any intermediate points right. Now, so what we have so far uh, we have these are the support reactions uh, and these are the internal forces and uh, internal forces and moment uh, for shear force and moment ok. Uh, please check this limit this is this equation is valid between this part 
and this equation is valid between these part. You put a star mark here because we will see for shear force this equality is not applicable because we will see that shear is not continuous. Um, we will come to that point. Now, uh, so what this expression gives us? This expression gives us how shear force bending moment at a particular location and the support reactions they change with change in position of the uh, change in location of this unit load okay, because x is the location of the unit load. Now, if we graphically represent this equation say for instance first represent the um, represent uh, this expression reaction b y then what would be the expression expression will be at x is equal to 0 this will be 1 and x is equal to l this will be 0 and in between b and c it is linearly varying. So, this is linearly varying. Similarly, uh, uh, similarly now this is called so, what this expression gives you, this graphical representation gives you, they tell you how the reaction at B is influenced by the location of the C unit load okay. or in other way how the location of this of this load concentrated load influences the reaction at B. For instance, if the if the location if the if we apply the load at B then what it says x is equal to 0, then what it says your reaction will be 1. If we apply this load at C, then reaction at B will be 0 and if we apply the load any intermediate point between B and C, the load will be load on uh, a reaction B y will be any the reaction B y will be uh, for any intermediate location for any intermediate location of uh, location of the load. Re reaction will be this, reaction will be this, okay. this will be B y, this will be B y. Okay. So, so one if we have this diagram then really we do not have to solve the problem again and again. What we have to do is okay, we know the location of the load, what is the value of y in this diagram and that uh, that ordinate uh, in this diagram will give us the reaction at B i. This expression, this graphical representation is called influence line diagram. So, this is called influence line diagram for B y means it is a it is a line diagram which which tells you uh, the influence of the unit load on support reaction at B. Now, similarly if we have to draw this influence line diagram for C y, now it will be it will be like this at x is equal to 0, it will be 0 and x is equal to L, uh, this is 1 and in between it is linearly varying. Similarly, so at when the load is acting at C, reaction at C will be 1 when the load is acting at B reaction at C will be uh, 0 and for any intermediate position of the load reaction at C will be this value, this value. Okay. So, this is the now this is the influence line diagram for C y. Now, let us draw the influence line diagram for um, shear force and bending moment. Now, this is the influence line diagram for shear force at um, this will be at E this will be E. Please correct this will be E, this will be E V. Now, so this gives you influence line diagram. So, what is that x is equal to 0 influence is 0 shear shear at V is 0 at x is equal to L it is now, at x is equal to L, this equation is not valid, we have to use this equation. If we substitute, this is again 0 and in between these two value, between this A and B, this is linearly varying and this is linearly varying and it is 9 minus and it is positive. Now, remember just now I said, uh, uh, this equality is not hold for shear force because uh, this at, at point E, there is a sudden jump, it is discontinuous. So, for E, for E, this expression is only valid between 0 to L excluding 0 to L by 2 excluding the point L by 2 and again this expression is valid between uh, L by 2 to B excluding the point L by 2. So, this, 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 this equality, this 
and this that is not valid for shear force. Okay. Now, again let us draw the similarly if we have to find out what is the for a given location of the unit, unit load what is the shear force this value will give us the what is the shear force if the load is here this is the shear force if the load is here this will be the shear force. Okay. Now, similarly let us find out what is the bending moment influence line for bending moment diagram this is the in not bending moment diagram influence line for bending moment and at e again uh, please correct this will be E. Okay, so, this is the influence, influence line diagram for bending moment at E. Now, what it says that when the load is acting at B, bending moment is 0, load is acting at C, bending moment is um, 0 and the load is acting at E, then the bending moment is maximum which is L by 4 and uh, for any other intermediate value the bending moment can be determined. So, uh, these values will give us the bending moment at E at any for any particular location of the unit load. Please, please, please uh, note that uh, these influence lines are not uh, influence lines and the bending moment and shear force diagrams are different. This, this is not the bending moment diagram of, uh, um, of, of B C. What it, it is the influence line of bending moment at E it gives you how the bending moment at E changes with different location of the unit load. Okay. So, this is uh, this is influence line diagram. Okay. Now, uh, as I said this please this equality is not valid for uh, shear force for bending moment it is fine because it is per, it is continuous. Now, uh, let us take one more example. Yeah. Suppose, uh, this is the example where uh, this is a cantilever beam, uh, suppose this is A, this is A, this is B and uh, this length is L. Suppose, I want there is a point C here, a point C here which is at a distance B from A, okay, at a distance from A. Now, what we want to find out, we want to find out what is the, what we have to find out, draw the influence line for support reactions means uh, the uh, reactions at A and also, so influence line I L for reactions at A. At A and and I L for V C and M C. So, this is the problem, right. We need to find out what is the um, uh, influence line diagram for the reactions and um, shear force and bending moment at any arbitrary point C, which is located at, at a distance B from support A. Okay. Now, um, let us consider now two situation. The first situation is the where the unit load is between A and C and the second case will be where the unit load between C and B. So, suppose the unit load is somewhere here, the unit load is which is at a distance x, which is at a distance x from A. Okay. Now, what are the forces we have? So, this is A, this is A, this point is C and this point is B. Now, what are the support reactions we have? We have A y and then we have M A. Okay, a x will be 0 that is why because there is no horizontal load that is why it is not shown explicitly. So, this value is 1, okay. this value of this unit load is 1, value of this unit load is this is 1, okay. 
not the value it is unit load means it is it is it is mm, it is assumed that it is value is 1 so this is case 1 right now the second case is when the unit load is between c and b so take another free body diagram between c and b this is a then c b support reactions are again same a y and then bending moment is a m a and the unit load is acting this is the unit load and which is at a distance x ok. Now, in this case x is between a and c and in the second case x is between c and b. So, this is valid for this portion and this is valid for this portion. Now, let us find out the uh, expression for bending moment, so, uh, expression for bending moment and shear force at C and support reactions at A. Okay. Now, if we draw the, now consider this free body diagram, just by looking at the free body diagram, we can say that A y is equal to, uh, let us A y is equal to 1, right. A y is equal to 1 and again, if we take moment from A, we can say that m a is equal to minus x. So, this is we can say right. Now, let us for this um, again if we apply summation of f y vertical forces is equal to 0, we can say that a y is equal to 1 and similarly, if we take moment about moment uh, moment at a, we will get m a is equal to this exercise we have done many times is equal to minus x right. So, this is the support reactions when the unit load is between a and c, this is the support reaction when in unit load between c and b. Now, let us find out moment and this uh, shear force and bending moment at c. Now, consider this case draw the free body diagram of c b. If we draw the free body diagram of c b, what are the forces we have? We have shear force which is uh, sorry as per our sign convention it will be up this is v c and this is m c ok and this is c this is b ok. Now, there is no load acting on it. So, automatically we can say that v c will be 0, v c is equal to 0 and m c is equal to 0. So, this is how shear force and bending moment uh, they vary when the load is unit load is between a and c. Now, let us for this um, case draw the free body diagram. If we draw the free body diagram of B c once again, this is B, this is C and uh, this is V c shear force at c and this is M c bending moment at c and then we have the unit load which is this is unit load and this distance is x and this distance suppose um, this distance is x. So, this will be um, x minus b ok. This distance is this distance will be x minus b ok. Great. So, apply the uh, uh, if we apply the summation of forces, summation of force in y direction is equal to 0, we get V c is equal to 1 and then if we take moment uh, about point c, we get M c is equal to minus x minus b. Okay. This we know how to, um, we have done it many times. So, this is the expression for this. Now, let us draw the uh, influence line diagram for uh, support. So, these expressions actually give us how the how these values the internal forces and support reactions they change with x and x is the location of the unit load. So, essentially they give us how these internal forces and support reaction they change with the location of the unit load. Okay. Let us first find out uh, draw the influence line diagram for, um, for, for, for support reactions. Okay. So, this is this is A, this is A, this is B. Now, let us see support reaction A y is equal to 1 between 
take C, Ay is equal to 1 uh, between A and C and between C and B still A1, Ay is equal to 1. So, the influence line will be this and these values here, yeah, these value is 1. So, this is this is influence line for this is I L for A Y. Okay. Now, draw the influence line for um, moment. Now, the influence line for moment will be at it is minus x when a to c and when c to b still it is minus x. So, x is equal to 0 it is 0 x is equal to l it becomes minus l. So, and in between it varies linearly let us use different color and and this value is minus l this is a b c. So, this is influence line for i l for m a influence line for moment a. Okay. Now, what it says that you have you apply load anywhere in between and to get the support reactions you just get the corresponding ordinate from this uh, diagram. Now, let us draw the influence line diagram for moment and shear. Now, this is the expression for moment and shear. Now, let us draw for shear. So, this is again A, this is um, C, this is B. What it tells? V C is equal to 0 between A and C. So, between A and C it is 0 and between, between C and B V C is equal to 1. So, this is the influence line for V C. So, this value is 1. This is influence line for I L for V C. Okay. Now, draw the influence line for bending moment or M C. What it says? This is A, this is C, this is B. M C is equal to 0 between A and C. So, it is 0 between, uh, between C and between C and B it varies, uh, uh, it varies with this. So, at it 0 here and x is equal to L it becomes minus L minus B minus L minus B and in between it varies linearly and this is influence line for M C. Okay. So, these four diagrams are the influence lines, these are for reaction, these are for uh, internal forces and similar exercise can be done for any intermediate points. Okay. Now, what is the um, and, uh, what is the use of influence line diagram as I said. Now, once you have this diagram it is essentially graphical representation of, of, of these equations. So, instead of having these equations uh, separately because these equations are not uh, for one part another equation for another part another equation. So, instead of having these equations what we have is if we have this representation then by just from this representation we can find out what is the uh, what is the internal forces and support reactions for a particular location of the influence line. Influence line diagram gives you some more information that we will understand as we uh, proceed. Okay. Uh, we, we stop here today, next class we will have we will do few more example on influence line diagram. Thank you.